Hi there, it's Felicia, one of the other naturalists here at the Elkhart County Parks. I'm back again to continue our A to Z series, this time with the letter O, O for ornate box turtle. So here in Indiana, we actually have 15 different kinds of native turtles, but only two of those turtles are going to be terrestrial. And those two are both different kinds of box turtle. So we have the Eastern box turtle and the ornate box turtle. And by terrestrial turtles, I mean that these turtles are gonna spend most of their life on land. They are capable of swimming, but uh, they prefer to live on land that is their habitat. All right, but we're talking about the ornate box turtle, and although they're not native to Elkhart County, you can find them in Northwest Indiana. You can also find them way down in the Southern part of the state, but they do share a lot of um, similar kind of behaviors, um, and even they can overlap habitat with Eastern box turtles. Um, so I actually have an ornate box turtle here to demonstrate some of those uh, adaptations and characteristics today. And I know this box turtle is male because if I get a good look at his eyes here, you can see those eyes are going to be this bright orange, sometimes a bright red color to some people. Um, and that only works for box turtles, but that's going to give away that is a male turtle. Females will have a much darker uh, brown eye. And you can also see he has these bright colors on the scales of his front legs here. Um, and that's another thing to look for. So if you do come across a box turtle, if you can't get close enough to their eyes, uh, you can look for those front legs. And if you see this kind of bright orange pattern again, that's going to tell you that it's most likely going to be a male box turtle. So to tell an eastern box turtle from an ornate box turtle, you can look for some other um, kind of features, but box turtles are really variable. So no two box turtles really look alike, but um, ornate box turtles are kind of notorious for having this light colored marking, almost like a line going down their shell. They also have uh, these light colored markings again on the bottom of their shell. This is called the plastron and this is called the carpus. Um, their coloration can be similar to an eastern box turtle, lots of uh, tans, browns, greens, yellows. Um, in the case of males, you can have these orange colors here. Uh, but the biggest difference between an eastern and ornate box turtle is really going to come down to their habitat. So where did you come across this box turtle? So ornate box turtles prefer big open areas, so prairies, grasslands, they like loose sandy soil, whereas eastern box turtles you'll find in the woodlands. All right, but to survive in those grasslands, um, those sandy soils, they do have some equipment that you won't find on an aquatic turtle. So first things first, a box turtle, all right? They have this pretty cool shell here. Um, and if I kind of flip them up here again, you can see his shell actually has two hinges and those allow for the box turtle to completely uh, go into its shell. So if this turtle did feel threatened by a predator, what it could do is tuck in all its limbs, even its tail back there, tuck in its front limbs, its head, and it could actually close this shell completely. So there's no access to get to its arms or its legs. Like with an aquatic turtle, you usually see them go into their shell when they're worried, but you're still able to see all of their, um, their hind legs or front legs, even their head. But box turtles can close it up completely, which is really beneficial to not only avoiding predators, but they're gonna have to hibernate because they are cold-blooded reptiles. So come those colder months, so right around September, uh, the box turtle, ornate box turtle, is going to look for a place to burrow. So they have these nice claws here on their hind legs and their front legs, and those claws are going to allow them to dig and burrow into the ground. So they'll only go about six to eight inches, but they'll go into their burrow um, and they'll go into hibernation, or for reptiles we call it brumation. They'll slow everything down, they'll use that energy that they stocked up on in the summer and the fall, and they're going to wait. And in some extreme cases, there's been records of box turtles or ornate box turtles actually waking up to burrow further into to the ground if it gets colder than maybe they had anticipated um, just to make sure that they are able to survive and emerge when temperatures do allow them to. So once they emerge um, they're going to be able to find their food again. So what does an ornate box turtle eat? They're going to be an omnivore. They actually spend the first five years of their life really kind of a carnivorous diet. They're going to eat lots and lots of insects. Uh, they like worms, crickets, that kind of stuff and they have this sharp beak that maybe we'll focus in on. And that's gonna allow, 
that's going to allow the box turtles to be able to eat things, kind of rip them up. Um, but then once they are a little bit older, like I said, after those five years, they're going to switch to more of an omnivore diet and start incorporating fruits and vegetables. Um, I know this time of year, right, we see lots of mulberries and blackberries out so if they can uh, get that kind of fruit in their reach then they're going to enjoy some of that as an older box stroll and they actually do have a pretty long lifespan so ornate box strolls have been recorded to live as long as 50 years in the wild but on average they live about 30. The hardest time for an ornate box stroll is going to be when they're a hatchling their shells just aren't as strong as they need to be. So even though they have the ability to go into their shell, it's not until they're about 10 that their shell is at its true hardest um, where predators aren't gonna be able to bite through it or break it, um, stuff like that. And their shells are pretty um, incredible and help them to get to those 30 years, maybe even 50 years of age. Uh, box turtles, not only go in there to hide from predators, but their shells protect them from extreme heat. They helped insulate them in the winter time. Um, with them living in those kind of grassland prairie open areas, uh, prescribed burns are something that happened. And turtles, once they go into that shell, they have the potential to be able to withstand that heat. Um, if they do get damage on their shell, they are able to recover. It's better if it happens earlier in those warmer months, so that gives them the summer to eat lots of food and have lots of energy to be able to repair. But sometimes if you come across a box turtle, you might be able to even see on their shell or maybe a potential predator or some kind of damage happened and they were able to heal from it. So uh, again, as the older they get, the harder and the stronger that their shell gets. And once they're about 10, it's as strong as it will get. Uh, they'll continue to grow, but their shell's pretty, uh, pretty guaranteed from uh, protection from any potential predators. So the behavior of an ornate box turtle is really similar to that of other turtles. They spend lots of time by themselves. They're solitary. They're only really going to be around other turtles when it's time to mate and they're diurnal. So they're going to be active during the daytime. I know a lot of times, especially in the warm months, we see turtles out basking on the logs, um, on the river and the lake. Um, with lots of other turtles, uh, but you won't find an ornate turtle in the water. So they can swim. They actually have lots of fat deposits in right under their shell that allows them to float. So they don't even have to really be good swimmers because they float just fine. But an ornate box turtle is not going to venture to the water unless it was really, really hot. They needed to cool down um, or maybe it was, you know, trying to escape from a predator. It might head to the water, uh, but you really are going to find them again in those kind of open grassy habitats. Uh, and in terms of predators, ornate box turtles have to worry about a lot of um, mammals, uh, birds, especially when they're hatchlings. Again, it takes them about 10 years before their shell is really strong enough to um, withstand all kinds of predators. Um, their shell really camouflages them into their habitat. So maybe they aren't quite 10 years old, but as long as they're able to get into their shell, kind of blend into the area, uh, they should be fine. And the, having those eyes, again, just like with lots of other animals, having eyes on both sides gives them a good view. Their eyes are pretty low to the ground. If you're a predator from above, uh, it's going to be hard for this guy to see, but being able to act quickly, pull those shells in or pull those limbs in is going to really help them get away. And this turtle, oh, maybe he'll do it a little bit there, but I'll try to find a cool video of a box turtle actually going into its shell just so you can see how fast and how efficient they're able to do it. That really helps them again to survive, not just from predators, but from all kinds of factors that could be in their environment. So thanks for watching um, Letter O, Ornate Box Turtle. Stay tuned on our social media because I'll be sharing more about the Ornate Box Turtle um, and maybe even some more videos of this guy because he is a program turtle. So he has a little chip in his leg, almost like if your dog or cat was chipped. And that tells the DNR that this is not a wild turtle. He is not suited to survive in the wild anymore. He was someone's pet. Um, they were able to give him to us because you can't actually have Ornate Box Turtles as a pet do use him for programs. He's very social. So stay tuned for some more fun videos of him. Thanks for watching.